I start a series of Rahu placement and its effect in different houses. Rahu is an extremely enigmatic planet which can take us to dizzy heights of success and at the same time it is that planet which does not lose much time in seeing us eat dirt. What makes Rahu tick? What are the karakas of Rahu? So before we move on to an area where we see the effects of Rahu in the first house, let us have a background about Rahu, its karakas and also the story associated with Rahu. Once we get to understand the Puranic story, it would be easy for us to draw a lot of inferences and understand the working principle of Rahu at a greater date. Rahu, as we know, was born to Simika and Vipracheti. Rahu's mother Simika was the daughter of demon king Hinakasha. Rahu was born as Swarbhanu and he was the eldest of the hundred brothers and he had a younger sister called Mahishmati. If you want to know more about Rahu and his lineage, well, Bishakha being his birth star and many other facts, please do read it on my blog it will give you a much more detailed information on Rahu, its appearance and many other factors. Let us move into the Puranic story which is very famous as it relates Rahu and Ketu. Born as Varbhanu, Rahu was one of the very influential demons who took part in the churning of the oceans. Before the churning of the cosmic oceans, began, Rahu had already been conferred a boon by Lord Brahma that he would make it as a planet in the times to come. Because of a huge war between the Devtas and the Danavs or the Asuras, Rahu moved on to be a part his, of his family, the Danavas. Now the churning of the oceans took place and it gave out a huge bounty of priceless and miraculous gifts. Of one of those was Varuni, that is the liquor, and the other was Amrit, the much sought after exilier of life. The Devtas and the Danavs alike ran for the exilier of life or Amrita and wanted to partake it. The Devtas were very much overtaken by the Danavas, but Lord Vishnu came to their rescue. In form of a celestial limb whose beauty could not have been defined in words, Lord Vishnu took on to distributing this nectar himself. He made the Devtas and the Deityas sit in two different lines. He went about distributing the so-called nectar in a judicious manner, or so it seemed. But in reality, he was giving the Amrit or the nectar to the Devtas and feeding the Danavas or the demons with Varuni or the liquor. As it so happened, there was Swarbhanu watching the entire process very carefully and realized that there was something going wrong. Very quietly, he took the shape of one of the Devtas and he moved and sat between sun and the moon. If we think on an esoteric level, Sun represents the soul and moon the mind or the manas. Here, sitting between the moon and the sun, he plays a part in getting the two away from each other. So the soul moves away from the mind or rather the mind moves away from the soul having lost its touch, connect with the divine because of illusion, maya or rahu. Moving on into the story, what happens is that when Swarbhanu's time comes, the sun and the moon decide that they have an imposter amongst them. They shout it out to Lord Vishnu, who without losing a moment, turns into his original form and throwing his disgust, cuts off Rahu's head. Alas, Rahu has already had that nectar and he has now become immortal. However, his neck has been chopped off. Here comes Lord Brahma's Vardhan or Lord Brahma's boon that Rahu would always become stay on as a planet. Swarbhanu's head becomes Rahu and his torso becomes Ketu. Rahu and Ketu are said to be the two nodes 
of intersection of the Earth's orbit and the orbit of the Moon. So Rahu is called the Northern Node and the Southern Node is Ketu. So much for the story. Lots and lots to be deciphered from the story and I leave it to our esteemed viewers to let me know their view. So let us talk about the characteristics of Rahu, the Karakas of Rahu and what it does in the first house. But before that, we also need to touch bases with the Karakas of the first house. The Karakas of Rahu. Rahu has harsh speech, particularly when aspecting the second house or being placed in the second house, Rahu does show a lot of harsh speech. Rahu is strong at twilight. Going to a different country, Rahu, if Rahu is aspecting or in transit going through your 12th house, you are likely to visit different countries during this period. Rahu is unclean. It is also breathing. So if it affects your third house and your fourth house, you could be having asthmatic issues also. Rahu is par excellence as an illusionist. When we talk about Rahu, we should know the fact that it creates a lot of illusions. We've seen that in the story. So gambling, the highest form of illusions in sports wherein a person feels the next dies and he is the richest man on this planet is a very great source of enticing people into its web as Rahu would do. Falsehood, speech, being a liar, creating things in a different manner, illusions is another way of expression of Rahu. Interpretation of dreams. In the world of dreams, we are in a different zone altogether and Rahu helps us do that. People who are afflicted by Rahu in a certain area of life can actually worship Devi Durga Devi and get their affliction reduced to a great degree. Rahu is wicked. We saw its cunningness right there in the story. Perplexity. It creates confusion wherever it moves. The amount of obstacles, the confusions Rahu creates knows no boundaries and it is an expansive planet. So when it gives, it gives in bountiful and when it creates obstacles, you would not be able to solve one before the other ones crop up. It's an irreligious person. Rahu represents the Shudra or the outcast. Rahu is a great occultist. It, been, it has been known that many of people who are into the occult have started their practices during the Rahu period or the Rahu Antardasha. Rahu has a very strong sense of argument and people who have their Rahu in the 3, 6, 10 or 11 have a great hand in argument and they have the ability to conquer their enemies. As I stated right in the beginning of the PPT, that Rahu is a great illusionist. For understanding what the first house stands for, let us go ahead with the Karakas of the first house. The first house represents a lot of things. The personality of the person, the facial expressions, the impression created by the person at the first glance the culture the person belongs to, the habits, the nature of the person, the behavior of the people, be it a male or a female, the build of the body, the body weight, the part of the body from neck up, that is the throat, and your face, your facial expression. It, the first house represents the ailments of the skull and the face in general. The first house is also the one that gives us the body odor. Behavior of people towards the parents and grandparents can also be sorted out from the first house. The first house in general denotes the maternal grandfather and the paternal grandmother. It also gives us our behavior towards our servants, our employees and employers. Certain instincts, good or bad, honesty, integrity, kindness, generosity, cruelty, misery, etc. can be found out from the first house and our hobbies too can be understood from the first house. So as we move to what relates to the first house as with Rahu, well, Rahu would not 
do things that are regular it does not follow the standard norms rahu has an out of box approach with the story we must have been able to understand that rahu has a very strong ego of its own so if afflicted this planet can give rise to a huge ego and ego building becomes a major issue with this planet if it is in a fire sign then that fire sign gives a lot of impetus for the rahu to grow and build a great deal of exaggerated sense of the self there is a strong need of expression of discovering the self when rahu is in the first house one needs to understand the initiatives and take them for his or her own and be good at doing what they want to on a higher plane rahu provides a piercing insight into the psychology and gives a person self analytical abilities rahu as we know is demon par excellence and provides great deal of stamina and vitality ability to understand the general strengths of masses and this helps the people to gain in for them own selves there is a need for self independence people who have rahu in their first house need a lot of me time need a lot of solitude and they're happy in that me time and the solitude not really needing much of other people's company rahu in the first house makes sure that the person exerts his personality and makes his or her self known as such let's move on to nomi campbell nomi campbell is an english model actress and singer she was recruited at the age of 15 and she established herself amongst the most recognizable and in demand models of the late 1980s and the 1990s and she was one of the six supermodels of her generation as declared by the fashion industry well this does not come easy for her at all she had to do run for her money had to give others a run for their money every inch of the way and had to struggle to find herself amongst the six supermodels to begin with her father deserted her mother when she was right there in her mother's womb just 6 months into pregnancy on insistence by her mother she's never met her father and she took up the surname of her step father when her mother would go traveling all over europe to earn the wages she was left behind from a tender age with her relatives and she took up ballet lessons she took up a lot of lessons and slowly and steadily she came to be known as a recognizable face at the age of 15 she was rec- uh, recruited as a supermodel she in her interviews later have said that though she became a supermodel she was not placed she was not paid as much as the white models in fact she had to fight to the nail for her place in the industry she has been a voice and a champion for the colored models and has wanted a pay scale similar to that of the whites she's also done a lot of charity work which has gained her a lot of recognition nelson mandela once called her his granddaughter so moving on to rahu in first house in aquarius a house of its own she has had to exert a lot in terms of getting herself known and making her personality felt the world over the second case that we take up is of florence joyce known as flojo she is considered to be one of the fastest women on the fact that her world records set in 1998 for both 100 meters and 200 meters still stand During the late 1980s she became a popular figure in international track and field because of her record setting performances and flashy personal lifestyle. Born of the seventh born as the seventh of the 11 children of her parents Florence also had a very humble beginning. She grew up in a housing society where her mother moved out and took her children to a government complex. Florence early on in life realized her sprinting abilities and got on to learn as much as she could and practice to the best. She did not meet her father for long intervals. There was also times 
then she would go to the desert where her father was living with the rabbits in the hay. And she ran to catch up with the hare. Apart from her skills as a sprinter, she also made her personality known by keeping very long nails. She kept her nails around six inches long and colored them in vivid colors. She also wore clothes that defined her personality very different from those of others on the track. She also wore jewelry to be able to be identified as different from the other athletes. Rahu, in her Lagna, right there in Virgo, gives her the potential to prove her abilities and to come out as a great individual. Rahu is very happy right there in Virgo, as we all know, because Virgo is a sign that Rahu associates, resonates so much with. So this Rahu gave her a very strong and individualistic personality. When we come to the inference, we can very well state that testing for supremacy and creating a niche and identity for the self is the most important when Rahu sits in the Lagna. More from this desk, but for all you audiences out there, please do write in your views and send in other observations of yours so that all of us can benefit. As a parting shot, another observation with Rahu in the Lagna is the person at one time has finds himself at an end with irreconcilable differences with parents and children alike. So do give in your views and till then have a great time.